Gentlemen, you need to understand that I am a man of strong moral stature. I give about 50% of my money to charity, but when she's not working, I give it to this other stripper called Shad Dynasty. Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, gentlemen? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the UMP. I really do appreciate you joining me. And today, we're going to talk about how to handle it when the sea hags are trying to get you jealous. God, it's annoying when they do this shit, isn't it? They freaking try to get you jealous. They talk about other dudes. For me, it makes me more turned off than if she suddenly turned into a grandma with a peg leg, dude. It just kills my attraction, and I do not understand why women do it. So if you're a girl listening, please spread the word to your little female harem. It doesn't work. It just makes us angry. It just pisses us off, and it makes us completely lose attraction for you. I can think of so many instances where I'm just hitting it off with girls in the nightclubs, dating girls, etc., and then they go and do some shit where they're hitting on another guy, flirting with the dude in front of me, and it's just like, ooh, goodbye, you're fucking done. You're all blown out. Kick rocks with your head down. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. You're all out of chips, you freaking canyon mule. They're out. But chicks will still do it, man. And I guess for some dudes it works, but I don't know about you. It does not work for me. It just pisses me off pisses in my river, launches a 50-foot rope of diarrhea right into my morning coffee, and I don't deal with it. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what I do when females do this. All right, gentlemen, before we jump into the content, I have to read another testimonial. Let me go down Flex Avenue a little bit, brother, because every single day I get new testimonials from guys who graduate from my three-month coaching program. This is from my boy, Austin. And Austin, if you're listening, I wish you were a little less humble about your results because, guys, this guy was an absolute superstar, absolutely fucking crushed it. And here's what he says. I started the program frustrated, confused, and completely unaware of the effects my belief systems slash traumas slash low self-esteem were having on all aspects of my life. Through the program, Mark incrementally teaches you the skills you need to not only be successful in dating, but to become an unapologetic man who willingly chooses to confront fears instead of hiding from them. I truly wish I'd gone through this program years earlier. There's a saying out there that everyone wants to eat, but few will hunt. I hope that you'll join myself and the other champions in the brotherhood who are of the few men consistently dating the women of our choice. And Austin, you are absolutely crushing it. I couldn't be more proud of you. And it's true, man. You know, there's few people who are willing to hunt, to go out there to get the life they really want. And what happens to them? They end up on their deathbed with regrets, wondering, what if I just invested in myself? What if I just joined Mark and the brothers and saw what this NLP is all about? But nah, man, I was doubtful. I didn't trust the guy. It's all bullshit. You can't trust what these dudes say on these podcasts because they're just trying to lie to you and take your dollar and just trying to fuck you over. But what if there's somebody out there who actually cares about your progress? And actually, there's an earlier part of Austin's testimonial that I want to read. He says, if you've listened to more than one episode of Mark's podcast, you already subconsciously know that Mark's message resonates with you. I cannot stress enough how genuine Mark is as a coach and mentor. He will be completely honest with you through the entire journey. Mark is not only an authentic coach, but the skills he teaches you in the program deliver results. And I think that's a perfect testament that, you know what, it's not always too good to be true. It's not always somebody trying to blow smoke up your ass or trying to market to you. There's people out there who fucking care about your progress. And the reason all my guys get success is because I fucking care. And I guarantee I will 10X your results. So please, brother, stop procrastinating. Stop putting it off. Stop avoiding your fears. Come fucking join us. I will change your life as I do every single guy who comes into my program. You could probably hear from my voice that I'm very fucking passionate about this and I'm pissed that you haven't joined us yet. So get off the fucking fence. Come see what we're all about. Get on a call with us. See if it's a good fit for you. What's the harm in that? All right, with that tirade out of the way, gentlemen, girls trying to get you jealous. Like I said earlier, man, it just pisses me off, dude. I don't know why they do this. It's so unbelievably unattractive. And in fact, when a girl is promiscuous, it's naturally unattractive in the male brain because there's a higher chance of somebody else inseminating her and her having that guy's baby. 
So women listening, the reason why it doesn't work with us the way you think it might work with us, at least guys who are secure in themselves, is because subconsciously, anthropologically speaking, we think that some other dude might get you pregnant. And because the entire purpose of attraction, the entire purpose of dating and seduction and this whole game that we're playing is to essentially procreate and carry on the lineage When we see another girl flirting with another dude, it turns us off because we know the chances of her having our baby goes down less and less. And this is from tribal communities. This is from like caveman days. So when I see a girl flirting with another dude, I'm just like, you're done. Goodbye. Now, obviously, I understand that girls are probably dating other dudes. And, you know, if she's flirting innocently, it's fine. But like when it's really turned up high and specifically done to try to get me jealous, I walk away. And I've had girls be like, dude, what happened? And they're like crying and shit. I'm like, dude, you fucked up. You're trying to make me jealous. You're playing games. I don't deal with this shit. Beat it. Kick rocks with your head down. So my client, John, hit me up the other day and he said, brother, I got a text from a girl who I'm about to hang out with. We've had a couple dates. We're going to hang out in the next few days. And she literally sends me a text that says, oh my God, John, me and my personal trainer have been working so hard on my body. We're going down to Belize this coming weekend and he's going to be so cocky showing off the beautiful body that he's created. Okay, so look at what she's trying to do. Now, I told John, brother, the reason she's doing this is because she likes you. She wants to create a positive result out of negative behavior. And I want to ask you, the podcast listener, do you reward negative behavior when she's trying to get you more attracted, try to get you jealous, trying to do some shit to make you like her more in a negative way? No, you don't reward it. The thing to do is to pull back. So when a girl is blatantly trying to get you jealous, specifically over text in this example, and I'm going to make some other examples in this episode, but when a girl's doing it over text, no response. Okay, you do not reply to that chick. And as far as you're concerned, you will never text her again. She's done. You essentially, in your own mind, drop that chick when she's trying to blatantly make you jealous. Now, obviously, if it's something like, hey, me and Brian went to Jamba Juice. It was so good. You should try the matcha green tea blast, which is my favorite drink. That obviously wouldn't necessitate such an extreme response. But when it's blatant, right? She's like, oh, me and my friend Adam were hanging out and he was like so into me. He was totally trying to kiss me and like, he's pretty cute, but I don't know if I'm really into him. Bro, she's done as far as I'm concerned. I recorded a podcast X many months ago called The Drop Rule. You need to be prepared to drop these chicks at the flip of a switch. Any single moment she fucks up, she's done. Now, obviously you understand as an unapologetic man that when you're willing to drop these chicks, the chances of them coming back go up exponentially, which is why many people say that seduction is counterintuitive. You would think, well, if I drop her and I don't reply, then I'm going to lose the connection, right? No, she's going to understand that she kind of fucked up a little bit with you and you don't stand for that kind of behavior. So anytime a girl texts me some negative bullshit, trying to get me jealous, complaining, being racist, being negative, anything I don't condone, I just don't respond. Literally, I will never respond to her again. She's done. We are broken up as far as I'm concerned. Now, I haven't told her, hey, we're broken up. You're all blown out. But my actions communicate that kind of behavior doesn't stand. So with John, right, this girl says, oh, I'm going to Belize with my personal trainer. He's going to be so proud. What a bunch of bullshit, dude. If I got that shit, I'd fucking delete her number and she would be done. But look, sometimes we have to be patient. Sometimes we have to teach these chicks. Like I said in my previous episode, teach them how to date you. So I told John, no response. NR, November, Romeo, that chick, which means absolutely no response. So he doesn't respond. And then what's going to happen? A couple days goes by. She's over there thinking like, oh shit, I fucked up, right? Did I make him mad? Does he not care? Is he dating some other girl? And listen, because she likes John, she's going to come back. Garen fucking T, she's going to come back. But if John was like, oh, I hope you guys have a good time and buys into it. Or he's like, dude, like, why are you saying that? Like trying to get me jealous and he gets butthurt about it. Both those things are going to result in a negative consequence. But instead, pulling back doesn't communicate anything at all. It communicates, well, he's just not communicating with me. Why isn't he communicating with me? Well, it must be because this text kind of rubbed him the wrong way, which through my research is what most girls will assume. 
I mean, listen, if you tried to make a chick jealous and she didn't respond, you'd be freaked out, bro, because the reason you're trying to make her jealous is because you like her. You say something like, oh, me and my friend Amy just got back from a bikini contest and she asked me to tie up her dental floss bikini and it got stuck in her ass and I had to like put my dick in there in order to get it out. And it, oh, it was so funny. It was so funny. And she doesn't respond to you. You're going to look at that text like the next day and you're going to be like, oh, I went a little bit too far with this girl. Then you're going to start freaking out a little bit. Then you're going to start overthinking it. And then you're going to send her another text, aren't you? Because you can't control that red helmeted warrior of yours in your pants that you stuck in Amy's butt when you were trying to get that dental floss bikini out of her butt crack. So you're going to text her just like that chick is going to text John. And now John's in the power position. Now, what does John do when she texts him back? He blows past it as if nothing ever happened. Okay, and I'm going to get into what to do if she does it again. But the first time a chick does some shit that you don't like, here's the strategy. You don't respond, okay? You wait for her to follow up with you again. And once again, I'm talking about texting here. You wait for her to follow up with you again, and then you go on forward as if nothing happened. Now, what if it happens again? Okay, so the first time she throws some shit at John, she's like, I'm going to Belize with my personal trainer. He's going to be so happy because I look amazing. God, just thinking about that text gives me the eebie-jeebies, man. I want to huck my cell phone out the window, but it's not me. It's happening to John. Okay, so he doesn't respond. Two days later, and John, I can almost guarantee you, 48 hours, she's going to text. Okay, she's like, so how you been this weekend? You quickly reply. And when I say quickly, I'm not saying like two minutes. I'm saying like an hour, right? You reply. You say, it was awesome. This thing happened. And then you carry on as if nothing happened. Now, a few days go by, maybe they go on another date and then she sends some others text, which is like, oh, I was on Tinder the other day and I got hit up by this like famous guy who wants to date me. And it's so ridiculous. They keep hitting me up on Instagram, which chicks will do all the time. This is what I do to that. I will call her and I'll be like, hey, you got a minute? And she'll be like, yeah, what's up? And I'll be like, so listen, I've noticed you've kind of been trying to get me a little jealous lately and don't play coy. You and I both know what's going on. Just to let you know how I work, it doesn't work on me. In fact, to be honest with you, it kind of pushes me away. It kind of makes me lose attraction for you. Now, here's the reason why that is. When a girl is with other dudes and specifically trying to get another guy jealous, it turns us off because we feel like she may be hooking up with those other guys. And that's like a massive, massive turnoff for men when women do that. Now, listen, you could sit here denying it. You and I both know what's happening. Like that whole Belize thing. Like, come on. Come on, are you honestly gonna tell me with a straight face that that's not what you were trying to do? Come on, Amy, come on, okay? So what you do, boys, you call her out on her shit. Okay, the first time it happens, ignore it, pull back, don't reply, blow past it. Second time it happens, I'm calling her out on it. And this too is what I do in person. We're on the first date and she says that same thing to me about the personal trainer. I ignore it completely, I blow past it. I'm like, that's cool. Hey, have you heard of this thing called messages in water? Or that's cool. Hey, do you hear the story about X, Y, Z and this thing that happened? I blow fucking past it as if what she said has no reality in my existence. I blow past it. Then if she says something again, I'm going to point out the whole Belize thing. I'm going to point out what she said this time and I'm going to do it with a smile on my face. I call it a wry smile. W-R-Y, wry smile. Like I'm a little bit entertained by it. I know what she's doing. I'm calling you out on it. You guys can hear it in my voice right now. I'm kind of smiling. I'm kind of like poking fun at her. I'm like, listen, Amy, this whole jealous thing, is that what you do? You try to get guys jealous? Does that work for you in the past? Did it work with this Brian dude who's taking you down to Belize? Come on. Come on, Amy. Be real with me. Listen, the reason why that doesn't work with me, I'm just being honest, I'm letting you know how I am, kind of kills my attraction. So when I imagine you with other dudes and like flirting with these dudes, listen, go do what you're going to do, okay? It's absolutely fine. You have to do you. I want you to live your life. But just letting you know, telling me about it kind of kills my attraction for you. Do you understand? And she's going to be like, yeah, well, I'm just, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm telling you about my life. Listen, you can tell me about your life, but when it's like angled in a way where it's clearly trying to get a reaction out of me, it kills it for me. Have I done that to you? No. That's because I understand this. I'm not going to talk about the other girls I'm texting with and like, oh, this chick tried to like break into my house the other day and climb through my window. And I'm not going to go there with you because I know it would kill your attraction for me. Aren't I right? She'd be like, yeah, I guess. So as I spoke about in that previous episode, boys, you have to call women out on their shit 
And you have to rationalize with them in a very composed way that their behavior is killing it for you, that it's making you unattracted to them and you do so unapologetically. And if she gets mad, that's her issue. And frankly, if she gets mad when I call her out about A of all, the personal trainer going to Belize, and then B of all, her entering a ball checking competition where she has to check the size of everyone's scrotum of the entire football team at her college so she can pass her anatomy test. I just totally pulled that one out of my ass. She tries to do two of them and it's so obvious she's trying to get you jealous. Call her out on it. Now, if it's subtle things, you ignore it and blow past it. Or if it's like continuously these little subtle things, she's talking about her guy friends and every hot girl has this guy friend, right? We call him an orbiter. Like he's orbiting her planet. Like he's a moon going boop, 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 orbiting her planet, just waiting to get in with her just in case Mark Singh blows it and fucks up, then I can get with Kelly. I can become her boyfriend. So you got this sea donkey who's fucking orbiting her planet, trying to get in with her and she'll talk about this dude a lot. Every time she talks about him, I'll just kind of ignore it and blow past it, or I'll call out the fact that he's an orbiter. I'll be like, yeah, Brian is a killer orbiter. That guy is indispensable as an orbiter. She's going to be like, what's an orbiter? I'm going to be like, oh, it's a guy friend who's waiting to get in with you. He's attracted to you. She'll be like, no, he's not. You'd be like, really? Does he do you favors? Would he wake up at 2 a.m. to come pick you up from a nightclub? Does he tell you how amazing he is, compliment you, and will do anything for you? And let me ask you this as a final question. Why isn't it that fat girls have guy friends? Why isn't it that unattractive women don't have like six dudes orbiting around them? It's because hot girls like you, and look in the mirror, Kelly, you're very attractive, attract dudes who are called orbiters. They're basically guy friends who have been relegated to the friend prison who want to get in with them. So there's always finesse when it comes to these things, boys. And this is actually the hardest thing to teach guys when it comes to seduction is there's always case-by-case -case situations where your reaction needs to be specific to the case itself, which is why I feel my program is so valuable because when you join us, you get unlimited access, lifetime access to the Brotherhood Facebook group. As of the recording of this podcast, I have 500 veterans of my coaching program who are all out there fucking crushing it with chicks. You, your jaw would hit the floor if you saw some of the results these dudes are getting. And we all come together to mastermind this shit. So you get a text from some chick, you put it in the Brotherhood Facebook group, you're going to get at least seven responses where guys are like, hey, this is how you handle it. This is what you do. Or you have a date with a girl and she does some shit and you come back and report it to us and we report back to you how you behave. It's those case-by-case -case situations that allow you to behave properly based on the exact circumstances. Because you may take from this episode, okay, anytime a girl does anything that remotely gets me jealous, I need to like have no reply or call her out on it. But it could be some innocuous, innocent thing that you shouldn't react to at all. Or a girl is fucking playing the shit out of you, trying to make you jealous over and over again, and you're too goddamn thick-headed to realize what's happening, and you accidentally reward that behavior, and then it just gets worse and worse and worse, and now you have a dumpster fire on your hands. So when dealing with women, and I make this analogy in the most respectful way possible, and it's the same thing with women dating men, it's like dog training. You got to reward good behavior and punish bad behavior, and you have to know what to do when, and that's the hardest thing to get right. It takes experience, it takes social intelligence, and it takes a community guiding you through each of your individual seductions to teach you what to do when. And that's the thing about my program. I know I'm hard selling it to you, but I want you to come join us, is that I'm selling you a transformation, not just information. You can listen to hundreds of these episodes, and some of you guys have, and still make the same mistakes over and over again because you're not experiencing these situations and learning what to do in those particular circumstances. So again, it's case by case, but here's the general message of this episode. Do not reward jealousy. When she tries to make you jealous, pull back or blow past it, or if she's doing it continuously, call it out in a very unaffected way where you have a slight smile on your face and you're kind of calling her out on her shit. Like, I caught you in your little game. And the reason you want to be unaffected is because that shows you have a strong frame and it shows it's not working on you. Because if you get butt hurt, it shows her that what she did affected you and you cannot let that happen. So jealousy boys, throw it out the window. And my final thing is, should you try to make a girl jealous? No, don't do it. Two wrongs don't make a right. 
It just doesn't work. And listen, if you're doing what I teach all my guys to do, which is to be dating four to five, 10, 15, 20 fucking chicks at once, they're gonna get jealous naturally. And it's actually gonna be harder to calm them down and to try to hide these chicks from one another, honestly, than it is to go out and like purposely try to make girls jealous. So again, this takes experience and that's why in my program, this is an experiential program. I want you talking to 10 to 20 chicks throughout the duration of your three months with us. And then after you graduate, like Austin, who fucking killed it and is continuing killing it, he gives advice to guys in the Facebook group and he gets advice from them as well. We're always posting screenshots of text. We're always putting up if-then situations. We're always understanding what's going on in each other's lives and we're guiding each other through it like a fucking mastermind. And that's why my guys are so successful. It's that community of brothers working together to get these girls so unbelievably attracted to us that shit like jealousy and them doing these little games have no effect on us. I said the other night in my coaching call that jujitsu is like throwing a tiger into a shark tank. What does that mean? If you're a tiger, if you're great at boxing, if you're great at kicking, you're some taekwondo guy, go against the jujitsu guy and he gets you on the ground. You're a tiger getting thrown into a shark tank. You're helpless. The shark is going to fucking tear you up. Now I know some people might be getting butt hurt, but I'm just making the very basic analogy that a jujitsu guy can neutralize a stand-up guy's game. If the stand-up guy has no jujitsu background, he gets him on the ground, he's fucked. That's the way my guys are with chicks. There's no chance for them when they have the NLP behind them, the education behind them, and the community, the brotherhood behind them. There's no chance, dude. It is a tiger in a shark tank. And if you want to come join us, we do have some openings. Go to my website, coachmarksing.com. Click on coaching, fill in the quick application. Note that I request that all my emails get replied to within 24 hours, not counting weekends. I'm going to email you personally. You and I are going to chat a little bit over email, and then you're going to get on a free one-on-one -on -one breakthrough session with my wingman and very good friend, Victor Lynch. He is certified in NLP. He is an absolute fucking assassin with women. And he too went through the program himself. And he too is in the community helping guys just like you get to the top of the mountain with the rest of us. There's a party at the top, bro. Look up there right now, man. How nice would it be to be able to get any single girl you see to approach her, get her attracted to you, yank her number, take her on a date and have sex with her if you want to. And if she tries to pull some jealousy shit on you, you're just like, ha. It's like a fucking tiger in a shark tank. No chance. Gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. I draw podcasts on Mondays and Thursdays, so please stay tuned for the next one, and I will see you in the next episode. Ah.